In August 1903, this film made its debut at the Alhambra Theatre in London. It stars a cheese mites crawling through a piece of Stilton, but on the big screen they look more like eight-legged aliens. It was an instant hit and marked the beginning of science and nature filmmaking. The original film is just a minute long and it just shows cheese mites shot down a microscope. There has been a story put about that um, the cheese manufacturers complained about the cheese mites film. Cheese Mites was produced by Francis Martin Duncan, an amateur natural historian who'd previously published books on how to take photos through microscopes. Another nature enthusiast called Percy Smith followed in his footsteps and made a film called The Birth of a Flower in 1910. Percy Smith at the time was working as a clerk in the Board of Education and he fixed up a special filming setup in his bathroom. He could darken the room and he made a gym crack device made up of uh, a seesaw with old, two old tin cans. The tin can slowly filled up with water and when it went, reached the bottom, clunk, it fired the shutter of the camera. And using this extraordinary homemade piece of apparatus, Percy Smith made the very beautiful film, Birth of a Flower. Since film reels were only one minute long, filmmakers were limited to making short films. But these were shown alongside other music hall variety acts that were typical at the time. People went to the theatre simply to be amazed, and that's just how they reacted to Smith's next film of a juggling fly. The acrobatic fly was a bit of close-up filming rather than shot through a microscope. And what Percy did was to tie the fly down with a tiny piece of silk thread and then just pass small objects to the fly. It looked as though the fly was juggling and that's what the public saw, but in actual fact Percy came to the conclusion that the fly was just doing what came naturally to it, i.e. trying to walk. So when he gave the fly a little ball made of pith, for example, then the fly walked and the ball went round. And in the best shot in the film, there's a ball with a fly underneath and another fly walking on top. Spectacular. People loved it. It soon became clear that the public loved nature films and the trend wasn't limited to Britain. In America, Thomas Edison was also experimenting with short science films, as were the Lumiere brothers in Paris. By the 1920s and 30s, nature films became an established genre and people were lining up to watch slightly longer films featuring animals, slime mould and even the life cycle of a pea. This isn't popularisation of science. This isn't elite science being translated to the general public. It's always shown to the public as though the people in the cinema could go out the following day with their nets and catch creatures from ponds and look at them under microscopes. It's a sharing of, of, an, of an approach to nature which had given pleasure to both Percy Smith and Francis Martin Duncan and to thousands of others. <laughs> Thank you.